Hey, how's it going everyone? Sarasota Tim. Thanks for uh, viewing my channel. I'm over here in Boynton Beach, Florida, and it's a hot one today. I, I tried to walk. I walked about a mile, mile point two, and trying to get my steps in. But I started a little bit too late, and today, I don't know what it is, but it's getting closer to summer. And once uh, that actual spring date happened the other day, it's been getting very warm every day. So I, I just couldn't take it. I was, you know, so I'd, I'll walk in a mall later. Or I'll walk this evening. So I'm just going to go over to the store right now and get myself a uh, salad. I buy those salad kits at Publix, the Caesar salad kit. And I'll have a can of um, garden vegetable progresso soup. That's my new thing. I'm trying to lose some weight, trying to keep my walking going. Same old story. <laughs> Everybody's doing the same thing. But uh, I would like to talk to you guys today about living on Social Security. You know, it was it's always been tough for people living on Social Security because it's not a lot of money. And it doesn't go very far. But now, as anybody knows, with the cost of... Uh, in, unless you have a place that you've been in that you own or a mobile home or a home that's paid for, unless you have that, if you're paying rent, most likely your rent got raised, like mine did over in Sarasota. That's why I'm in Boynton Beach, living in a 16 foot travel trailer camper. But it's, uh, it's really getting tough because you get so much money. People get between twelve and fifteen hundred on average for Social Security. Some get a little less. They didn't work a lot or file taxes, and um, and some might get more. They paid a lot in, but it's not a lot of difference. I'm right there in the average to above average, and you know only because they raised it eight point seven percent at the beginning of the year for the inflation, and then. As soon as they did that, bread went to $5 a loaf. Gas keeps getting higher. And so, really, it just ate it right up. I mean, I'm thankful I got it. It still helps a little bit. But it's not going very far. And like most people, <laughs> if they have any savings and they don't work or make you know any other money to subsidize... Or supplement their Social Security, they uh, they're taking out of their savings, and that's that's kind of what I'm doing. So now the time has come that I've got to come out of this retirement. I'm not doing anything, as you can see. I'm a very well-abled, healthy guy. I don't need to be sitting at home all the time. I can work. So I'm looking for a job. So I got an app called Indeed, and it, you know, lists all these jobs. I started out thinking I would just get something part-time, but I think I probably need to work full-time because, you know, in the past, what I did is I worked for myself. It was very lucrative. Uh, if you work at some little menial job, you know, you get this hourly wage, 10, 12, 11, 13, 14, 15 would be the moon. And let me straighten this camera out a little bit. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm kind of holding out for is at least 14 if I work full time. So I don't know, I gotta find a job to supplement my social security. I'm sitting here at Publix and people are, uh, don't know what to do, how to drive. They're waiting around. Excuse me, move on, move on. So, uh, I'm looking around all these different things and man, there are people wait in this aisle for an hour to, to get up close. I'm just uh, driving around as I'm talking on this phone. This guy's got one brake light out. Well, I'll let you know what happens. And of course, if I get a job that's going to, you know, commit me to staying here in Boynton Beach and, um, I'm going to go around. This guy's going to wait forever for this car to leave. Please. 
people really don't want to walk five feet. It's packed in here because there's tourists everywhere and they got a big construction going on across the street and everybody uses this one parking lot over here, all the construction workers, to park. So I'll throw it right in here. Hopefully I, I'll be okay and not get any door dings. That's what I always worry about. I think I'll go right over here. So let me get back to what I was talking about. And um, so I looked at a couple of jobs on that app indeed and one was at Lowe's. And I went in, did the interview. The guy's basically a screener. And I haven't heard from anybody. Uh, I mean, they'll hire anybody here because you won't believe what we got working in these stores. I mean, it's uh, the lowest of the low because they don't have any trade skills or they're from another country. And they're just taking all these, uh, these low-paying jobs. But anyway, uh, Lowe's wanted me to maybe work in the lumber department. I can't build a doghouse. But the guy told me, don't worry, you know, there's nothing you have to really know much about. You know, there would be a little lifting and all that. And I'm like, well, that's fine. I need to lose some weight anyway. I figured, I figured it was exercise. And that's what he said. Yeah, I look at it like exercise. But they haven't called me. Uh, but I'm not going to take that job. And I'll tell you why. If they did call me. They uh, were talking about a full-time position that starts at 6 in the morning, but you got to be there at like 5.30. That means you got to get up at 4.30 or 5 to get ready, you know, have some breakfast and coffee, and uh, get there. And I'm not going to do that. No. Last time I got up that early, uh, well, I had a paper route when I was a, a boy. I'll get up sometimes at 4 or 5 in the morning. I got up this morning early. Only if I want to. But lately, since the time changed, I actually been sleeping till 7.30 or a quarter to 8. And us old guys normally get up, you know, earlier, like 6. But I would still have to get up earlier than I would normally to go to this job. I'm not going to do it. So then I was in a store the other day, and some senior citizen woman was passing out samples of wine in a little thimble. You know, you've seen them. They either have some food, crackers things they want you to sample and buy. And this time it was wine. And I asked her about it. I said, how do you like doing this? She goes, I've been doing it for 20 years. She says, I love it. Nobody bothers me. I'm here on by myself. I'm here only three hours. They give me for, they pay me for three and a half hours. You get $20 an hour with liquor and wine. You only get 13 an hour for like passing out the crackers and stuff. And she called this lady because I inquired about, well, who do I talk to? And when I called the lady that she gave me the number, she says, yeah, uh, so I think her name was Pat. Pat called me and told me about you. I was hoping you would call. Well, I haven't heard from her either. You know, they want to send you a, um, you know, information. And she sounded like she was chomping at the bit to get anybody she could to do these jobs. But so funny, I talked to my sister. Uh, I have a sister in South Carolina, and she said, People are not returning um, application responses very fast. I guess she's been looking at some side hustles. And so she, uh, you know, told me that. So I guess it's not unusual. But, I, you know, back in the day when I used to work for somebody before I worked for myself, you know, you just went into a business and asked for the manager or the owner and, you know, asked for about a job. All this online stuff now, it's, it's, then you gotta go in for an interview, a screening, then they want a drug test and a background check. And these are all things we didn't do, you know, years ago. They need to do it now, of course, because there's a lot of, a lot of bad people out there. And they told me it takes like 10 days or so to get the, uh, the drug test back. So it's like a two week turnaround to even start working, well, damn, you know, so it's all kind of uh, disenchanting, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm aggressively looking. I have to make some money. I get a small revenue from my YouTube channel because my channel is monetized and, but, um, you know, I don't get the views that big time YouTubers get, so I'm not making that kind of money, 
I would love to. I would love to be able to come up with some great content, some riveting viral videos. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate everyone that does view my channel and subscribe to the channel. You know, I get only a fraction of views compared to how many subscribers I have. But it makes me feel good anyway. I'm, I'm approaching 3,000. And that's going to be another milestone when I get to uh, that 3,000. So, anyway, that's the latest with me. Um, desperately trying to figure out something to talk about for you guys. Drive around and face the camera the other way and show you some areas in Florida. The whole idea about traveling with the camper, I kind of put the kibosh on because that was going to be a great, uh, great videos I could have made, made some good content by traveling around the U.S. in my Forerunner pulling my Wolf Pup camper. But this thing only gets 10 miles per gallon, and that would not, that would not allow me to work and make anything. I would just cost. And until the channel got really big and some big revenue came in from YouTube, I would just be spending. And I don't want to go close by when I get in this thing and want to pull that camper. I want to go, I want to go to um, out west. I want to, I want to go to New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, Texas. I want to go everywhere. I want to see the national parks, the state parks. I want to see Tahoe again, but. Pulling a, a trailer through the mountains, I mean, it only gets 10 miles per gallon on flatland. Then I got to buy a brake controller because this doesn't have a brake controller on it. It came with a trailer package with a light hookup and all and the hitch. But people have told me don't pull anything without a brake controller. So I would definitely do that. They want a couple of hundred dollars for the, the controller. And there's videos to show you how to put it in, but... I don't know if I want to tackle it. And I don't know if I want to screw any holes in the bottom of my... I just like to let it lay there, put it on the side somewhere. Uh, so when I'm towing, I have it. But that's another story. And I bought this uh, weight distribution hitch, which I've never used. That was $250. And I need to change the front and rear differential and the transfer case oils in this truck before towing. And they want about $400 at the dealer to do it. I can do it myself, but I don't have tools. I don't have a, a, a shop. I don't have jacks and things like that. I mean, I've seen the videos to do it myself. I was going to find a place to do it. But, you know, I haven't done it yet. I got 36,000, close to 37,000 miles on this 4Runner. And it was supposed to have been done at 30,000. So I'm neglecting the Forerunner. I get the oil change because it came with the came with the purchase. I think I even got one left. And you can go 10,000 miles, even though they don't really recommend that uh, with the synthetic oil. But anyway, I'm going off on another uh, venture here in this video about everything versus the um, Social Security. the The economy is um, changing, and the housing market and the rent prices are coming down or getting an adjustment everywhere but here everybody and their brother is moving here and everything continues to go up there is way more demand than there is availability and nothing is there's so much money here the disparity between those that have and have not is insane there's Rolls Royces on every corner Everybody's got a Mercedes and all these houses on the ocean here are not even, they're not even in there in half the year because it's so hot. They got 10 homes. It's just a place to park money in these homes down here. They just, um, you know, buy these big houses and I guess uh, they make a lot of, uh, a lot of money. But anyway, uh, I don't have any, <laughs> I need to get some. And uh, I was so excited about getting my Social Security a couple of years ago. I figured, well, at least my housing now will be, you know, covered completely. Maybe even the utilities. I wouldn't have to worry about my mortgage or rent. You know, I was wanting to buy something. 
when that came because I'd have that automatic check every month. And I still have that little grub stake every month coming in to go towards that. But hell, just to rent a place today, or if I wanted to buy a home at the new mortgage rates and the home insurance prices in Florida and the maintenance and the utility costs, it's like hardly any help at all. So I'm kind of stuck in this camper without being able to tow it somewhere else and find a job and live somewhere else. Uh, I've got a good deal on my rent, so that yeah, kind of keeps me here. So I don't know, It's uh, something's gotta change. I'm praying about it, something will happen. I know the good Lord does have a plan, knows the future for all of us, and I believe in that. I am a believer, so I'm not, you know, crying or having a pity party. But I'm just saying, if a lot of people are struggling and there's no sense in it. You know, we got all these homeless people walking around, people that can't pay rent, they're working for nothing an hour, and they're, they're paying these enormous, exorbitant rent prices. It just doesn't seem fair. I mean, okay, everybody's entitled to get what they want. If I had three rental houses, I wanted to rent them out, and I could get three grand a month versus what I used to get, 1500 a month, maybe I'd do it too. But what I'm saying isn't fair is all these people that are working, that are serving everybody, doing these jobs that nobody wants to do, cashiers, baggers at Publix, you know, whatever they're doing, working at all the little small retail stores, dress shops, malls, they're not getting any money. You know, uh, pay them 20 bucks an hour, at least 15, you know, um, everybody's crying that it costs more money to, that's why they have to raise prices. But all I see is people's profits going up. I don't see where they're having to raise these prices on everything. And now that's what they've done because they they know that we um, we just accept it. So literally every item that you purchase is more expensive now. I mean breath mints, chewing gum, bread, everything. You know, and all the course of all the things that we talked about before. But it is what it is, right? Welcome to 2023 and uh, after the pandemic and the great reset, I guess. <laughs> Don't get me started. Get out there and crush it, guys.